Episode 246, Unregistered Marriage. Two women stood up together and watched Hugh walk in with big steps. Juliana took two steps forward, as if welcoming him. But she saw that he was slightly shocked when he saw her. When they met, she would usually be donned in casual clothes with little makeup on. But at that moment, she had put on makeup and looked fresher and more attractive. Moreover, the clothes she was wearing suited her temperament, making it an unforgivable sight for others. There was no doubt that Juliana was really beautiful. But only at this exact moment, Hugh realized that Juliana could actually be that stunning. Rachel gave him a surreptitious wink and said, You must be stunned by her looks, right? Isn't our Julian really beautiful today? Anne also smiled and said, Today is a good occasion. That is why one must dress nicely. You guys should go get your marriage certificate as soon as possible and bring it back in the afternoon. After saying so, she looked at Hugh and continued, If your dad has prepared a feast, both of you should attend. If not, come back for lunch in the afternoon and we will celebrate together with you. Juliana's face turned red and she looked down shyly without saying a word. Hugh recovered from his daze at that instant and coughed. <clears throat> there are some unexpected changes with this matter. Confused, Anne asked, What happened? Hugh said with a pale face, My dad accidentally wet the household registration booklet and also damaged one of the pages, rendering the household registration booklet unusable. He has gotten someone to fix it, but until then, we cannot register our marriage. After hearing that sentence, Anne's expression froze. Rachel frowned and could not help but sneer. This household registration booklet really got spoiled at the best moment. Hugh felt a little awkward and he looked at Julian. I will inform you of the exact date. Without the household registration booklet, they could not register their marriage. Although Julian felt disappointed, she quietly sighed in relief. Actually, she hadn't really gotten used to such a quick process. Luckily, the marriage process had slowed down, allowing her to take a breather. At that moment, Juliana's phone started ringing. She frantically fished her phone out of her bag and instantly answered when she saw who was calling. Yes, Dad? What? Y'all have already reached Washington, D.C.? Stunned, Juliana's eyes widened, and the person on the other side of the phone said, That's right! It's such a big and joyous occasion that Juliana is getting her marriage certificate. Of course, we had to rush over to Washington, D.C. Although you said you would register the marriage before the wedding dinner, we should also have a small gathering tonight. Am I right? Juliana, not knowing how to reply, reluctantly agreed. Yes, right, right. But now, how was she supposed to tell them that they wouldn't register in their marriage? Her dad continued speaking. Juliana, what time are you going to the Municipal Government Bureau? Do find a decent hotel to hold the wedding dinner. There is no need to be thrifty for this important occasion, okay? Juliana took a deep breath and replied, nodding. Yes, Dad, I know. After she hung up, Anne was also stunned. Now that the in-laws have come, what do we do? How would they pay their respects to their in-laws without the marriage certificate? Just as they were fretting over the problem, Joshua came downstairs and said, 
It is alright even if your household registration booklet is damaged. I have a friend working in the police station. I can give him a call. You can register your marriage at the arranged time. After hearing this, Hugh's eyes brightened up and he said, Sure. Hugh was a capable man. Together with Juliana, he drove to the police station to file a report and then went to the Municipal Government Bureau. In less than half a day, they managed to get their marriage certificate. As he held up the marriage certificate that was hot off the press, Hugh found himself in a rather distracted state of mind. Juliana even more so. She felt like she was dreaming and floating along. They stood outside the Municipal Government Bureau looking at each other, not knowing what to say. The fact was that they had known each other for only a month and were almost strangers. Even if they added up all the things they had ever said to each other, it didn't amount to much. Hugh cleared his throat and said, Um, your parents, dad and mom-in-law, where are they now? We ought to be there to receive them. Juliana hung her head and looked at her feet, feeling shy suddenly. Mom and dad-in-law. He was quick in adopting the new way of addressing them. Glancing at Hugh, she said after a pause, I, I'll call them to ask. After she made the call and got their address, Hugh drove her to the high-speed rail station. As they arrived at the place where they were supposed to meet, Hugh saw a couple in the distance. They were both in their 50s, but looked older than his own parents. They were wearing obviously new clothes, yet it was easy to tell that these were low-priced goods. Both of them were neat and clean. Juliana's father was a teacher and looked like a literary, and her mom, a very gentle lady. She was a health care provider. When Juliana saw them, she was excited like a child. She hugged her father and then her mother. She started chatting incessantly in high spirits. Finally, her dad turned towards Hugh and inquired, This is Hugh? Hugh? Hugh was stunned for a moment before he realized the man was referring to him. Hence, he rushed forward as someone brought up in a good family. He came across well-mannered. He stood before his new in-laws and greeted them respectfully. Father-in-law, how do you do? Mother-in-law, how do you do? As Juliana stood by the side watching them, she felt a sense of relief at once. She had been worried that he would come across as a spoiled brat from a wealthy family and that he would be rude to her parents. However, now, it looked like she had been just overthinking things. Furthermore, he had come across very gentlemanly when he greeted them. However, her parents suddenly cracked up at his greeting. Hugh looked at them with a puzzled expression. Juliana's dad said, The formality sounds awkward. Why don't you just call us mom and dad, like Juliana? Readily following their advice, Hugh greeted them again. Dad, Mom, how do you do? It's the first time we're meeting. I look forward to learning from you in the future. Grinning from ear to ear, her dad nodded with approval. Good, good. Then he turned to his daughter and said, Juliana, you found yourself a good man. At once, her face flushed. Quickly moving to carry her parents' suitcases, she said, Dad, Mom, let's get in the car. Next to the two huge suitcases, her petite frame looked particularly delicate. Hugh walked over and picked them up instead, one in each hand. These suitcases that looked oversized next to Juliana seemed almost weightless in his hands. Her dad looked at the young man and exchanged a meaningful glance with his wife. 
He seemed satisfied as he gave her a knowing smile. This son-in-law was not too bad. After they got into the car, Hugh picked up his cell phone and explained to his parents-in-law. Dad, Mom, your visit was quite sudden and we're not prepared at home. I'll call them now and have them tidy up the guest room for you. And also book a hotel room. My parents can come and meet you both as well. Juliana's parents quickly said in response, We won't stay at your place. We'll stay at a hotel. They glanced at Juliana and continued, Or we could stay with Juliana. Juliana nodded once. Yes, you can stay at my place, as I'm now at Aunt's apartment. Hearing this exchange, Hugh paused, glanced at his in-laws, and suggested to Juliana, Your place is too small for Mom and Dad. Why don't I arrange for them to stay at our family-owned hotel? It won't cost them anything. Hearing that the accommodation would be free of charge, her parents finally agreed. Accordingly, Hugh made a call and booked the presidential suite. Following this, he made a call to James. The call was picked up, and James's voice came through. What is it, Hugh? Okay, so Juliana's parents are in Washington, D.C. Would you have time for dinner tonight? James was silent for a moment before he said, About this. Let's wait for a while more. After all, you still haven't gotten your marriage certificate. Our family... Interrupting the man, Hugh informed him immediately. We have our marriage certificate. There was a stunned silence on the other end before James questioned. What was that you said? Hugh continued driving as he listened to his father's angry hollering through his Bluetooth earpiece. He, however, had a grin on his face. Dad, it is okay if the household registration booklet is damaged. The police station issued us a police report. James was livid. How could you register your marriage just like that? Without my permission? Hugh raised an eyebrow and said to his father, Didn't you agree yesterday? James thought... That was just a delay tactic. He felt that his son had been seduced by Juliana because he was too young to know how to resist her. After delaying it, he was hoping that Hugh would be less curious about this woman and eventually lose interest. This was the scheme that he and Suzanne had come up with so that it wouldn't sour the relationship between the two men. But now, James was heaving with anger. How could Hugh have discovered his cunning scheme? James took two deep breaths and said icily, I have an important meeting today and can't cancel. Go look for your aunt. Right after saying this, the phone line was cut. Hugh frowned. He had known from the start that his father did not like Juliana. The household registration booklet being damaged had just been an excuse to delay things. However, he knew that his father had done this in his interest. The man was afraid that he was being cheated. After all, he did not know Juliana. Even himself, in fact, did not know Juliana that well. But he did want to get married. That was his current obsession. If Dad didn't understand it, then so be it. Hugh picked up his cell phone to call Suzanne. However, Juliana, who was sitting in the passenger seat next to him, reached out to stop him and said, Let's go and see my aunt. Hugh paused. Juliana hung her head and said, I've been there for a month now, and aunt has been very kind to me. We should have a meal with her first. Besides, she wishes to see my parents. Before I left the house today, she had already started preparing. Hugh thought about his aged mother, and his heart softened. Then he nodded. Hence, they took her parents to the hotel, and after they dropped their belongings, they headed for his family villa together. 
After James hung up the call with you, he angrily dialed Suzanne's number. Episode 247, Arrogant Tweet. The moment she picked up, he went off in an angry tone. All these troublemakers, since when has he had a friend in the police station? How did things turn out like this? Suzanne was quiet for a moment, and then she spoke. I recall that Ethan works at the police station. The moment she said that, James's blood boiled. Him again. That dishonorable son, Joshua. This time, he said nothing about Anne. After all, she had almost died from his last provocation, and he still felt guilty about it. Suzanne sighed and tried to comfort him. Don't get too worked up. The children are grown up, so it's the time that they do things like that. Since they've registered their marriage and her parents are here, we should host them. Otherwise, it would look bad if it gets out. James snorted and spat. I'm not going. I'm not going to give them any face. I'll tell you what. If Hugh comes looking for you later, arrange a meal at a good restaurant with the girl's parents. Let's embarrass them and let them realize how stupid it is they could even consider marrying their daughter to Hugh. Suzanne nodded. Since they are married, let's not make things difficult. I'll make reservations at a hotel restaurant and we'll host them tonight. Infuriated, James raised his voice again. You can go by yourself. I said I'm not going. After saying those words, he hung up the phone. Suzanne furrowed her brow and contemplated it for a moment. And then she sniggered to herself. In fact, she had no objections to the children's marriage. On the contrary, she welcomed it with open arms. Why so? Because she had never had any children of her own after she married James. Given that James was well over 10 years older than her, if he died before her, she would only have Hugh to depend on. For all these years, she had doted on the boy because she knew she had to bank on him to provide when she got old. If Hugh married a girl from a wealthy family, however, in comparison to her, she may not be able to secure such a good standing, and with her authority in our family, but be mistaken for sure. Having Hugh marry Juliana was different. Juliana. She lowered her gaze as she thought of how weak this girl was. She would be an easy person to control. At this thought, she quickly picked up the phone to make reservations at a classy restaurant. Following this, she waited for Hugh's call, which unexpectedly never came. Puzzled, Suzanne raised an eyebrow. She waited, and another two hours passed. It was already past three in the afternoon. Would they still be on time if he didn't call soon? Hurriedly, she picked up her cell phone and dialed Hugh's number. The line was connected and she heard his voice. Aunt, what's up? A little surprised, Suzanne paused before saying, I heard that Juliana's parents are in town. Shall we have dinner tonight? There was a brief silence before Hugh replied. Aunt, since you hadn't made any preparations, we're having dinner at my mom's. They have already prepared dinner. Suzanne was completely unprepared for such a turn of events. She clenched her fist, taking no notice of her long fingernails that were digging into the flesh of her palm. My mom. Since when had Hugh started calling that woman mom? She gritted her teeth, but tried to sound as gentle as possible. Since that's the case, all right then, we'll host the in-laws tomorrow instead. It's okay, aunt. There is no need for that. Stunned, Suzanne heard Hugh continue. It's meaningless if you came without dad. 
Juliana's parents would suspect something's wrong. Our two families will come together when my dad finally comes around. In any case, her parents would be in Washington, D.C. for a while. And also, Aunt, please help me prepare for my wedding. We want to have the ceremony before Juliana's three months pregnant. Otherwise, it will become obvious. Suzanne gritted her teeth with fury. This Hugh? Who did he think he was? He didn't want to have dinner with her, but instead he asked her to help him with the chores? But it was not as though she could say anything. Eventually, she could only say, Since you've registered your marriage, then bring Juliana home with you tonight. We will prepare the room for you. Well, Dad doesn't like Juliana. I don't wish to stir any trouble. Mom has just said that there's room in our family villa. Juliana will stay here for now. Stumped, Suzanne didn't know what else she could say. If the daughter-in-law was staying at Anne's house, how would Hugh want to come back home and stay there? This Anne, she had planned her moves. She had snarled Hugh for herself through the daughter-in-law. Her eyes flashed. Indeed, Hugh did not return home that night. The next morning, he called to say that he had had too much to drink with his father-in-law and ended up staying the night. Livid, Suzanne thought of ways and means to get Hugh to come home, but James wouldn't budge an inch. She panicked. No one was happier than Anne, of course, with the fact that Hugh had stayed over at the villa. She grinned from ear to ear all day long and did not stop smiling for a moment. But because she had not fully recovered, she sent Emily along with Juliana to accompany her parents, sightseeing around Washington, D.C. When she woke up in the morning, Rachel remembered that this was the day that Santiago had called for the press conference. Joshua had left early in the morning to attend a meeting. They had arranged to meet directly at the press conference venue instead. She got out of bed, washed up, and put on her makeup. Just as she was leaving, she heard Hugh making a call to Suzanne. He was on the balcony with his back facing the room. He sounded like he was a spoiled child throwing a tantrum. I know, I know. Don't worry, aunt, you're too naggy. I'll go home for sure tonight. At first, Rachel did not take that to heart. However, when she turned around, she saw Anne standing close by. She had to have heard Hugh's conversation too. Looking very disappointed, she turned to walk away. Leaning her weight on the walking aid, she made her way up the stairs with much effort and returned to her bedroom. Rachel felt her own heart shrivel in pain at once. She frowned. Just at this point, she saw that Hugh had hung up and was walking in from the balcony. He had too much to drink the night before, and he was frowning in pain. There was a bowl of soup on the coffee table for dissipating the effects of the alcohol. Anne had left it there for Hugh. Pointing at the bowl, Rachel was compelled to inform the man. Mom made this for you early in the morning. Drink it up quickly. Hugh paused. Rachel continued. Some people show their concern through actions. Others do it through words. Hugh, you're an adult. You should know well enough as to Hugh is good and otherwise. Why do you think Juliana was reluctant to let you go back to the family home? Hugh paused and his expression immediately turned cold. What do you mean? Rachel laughed icily. Exactly what I said. Juliana has never been to your house before this, but after she did so, do you know how she'd been feeling? I saw how worried and nervous she was. What was in your house that made her so afraid? Hugh snorted coldly and said, don't try to sow seeds of discord. Besides, let me tell you, since you have time to mind my business, why don't you worry about yourself too? 
Puzzled at his remark, she shot back. What about me? What about you? And the news that Emma is my brother's mistress is a trending topic on social media now. Don't tell me you know nothing about it. Rachel. She didn't know whether to laugh or cry at his remark. She looked at Hugh, who was now frowning deeply. He said, Don't look at me like that. Even though he's my brother, I do think he's in the wrong. So far, he has not made a statement clarifying whether or not Emma is his mistress. This itself is not right. Even if he's trying to create publicity, he shouldn't do it through such scandals. He snorted and muttered, All these underhanded means. Rachel admitted defeat and truly bowed to this guy's IQ. She cleared her throat and said, <clears throat> Well, isn't there a press conference today? I should be going. Upon hearing this, he frowned and said after a moment, Since I have time today, I'll go with you. Rachel raised an eyebrow in surprise. Why would you want to go? To see what Emma looks like. To see what sort of vixen has such a hold on my brother. Then, he looked at Rachel with a haughty but tender expression. Don't overthink it. It's just that I'm afraid you might get bullied. Rachel. That gesture revealed a side of Hugh that he had always attempted to hide. And she found it extremely adorable. And now, she had discovered it. Although outwardly he seemed like an awkward person and was unaffectionate towards Anne, in reality, he was an extremely accommodating person. He would not allow his friends and family to be attacked or taken advantage of by others. Thus, a wave of warmth came over her as she realized that Hugh was not as hopeless of a person as she had first thought. She nodded and said to him, Fine. Let's go together, then. On their way to the conference, in the car. Since she had some free time, Rachel picked up her cell phone and went into social media. She had been meaning to log in and have a look for the last two days, but she hadn't had a chance because of how busy she had been with Hugh's and Juliana's marriage. When she logged in, she saw that after a few days of brewing, the amount of flaming and caustic remarks that she had received had shot through the roof. This matter had gone beyond red hot. Many of these people demanded an explanation from her. Reading through the comments, Rachel felt no anger and could only find Joshua's fans quite adorable. They berated her for using him to gain attention, but did not say a single nasty word to him. They were sure that it was all fake news. Their best actor would never cheat. As she read the comments, she couldn't help but burst out laughing. After thinking for a brief time, unable to control her own mischief, she posted a message. Emma, it seems like I've become your mistress. At Joshua. The moment the post was released, it immediately caused a pandemonium on the internet. Very quickly, the post was shared and circulated around. Many celebrities spoke up and chided her for being arrogant. Rachel looked at the flurry of posts and bit her lip. As she was doing so, she heard Joshua, who was sitting in the front passenger seat, exclaim with fury, Damn, Emma is really too arrogant. He turned to look at Rachel in the back seat and asked her, Have you seen Twitter? Emma is actually going over the board. Do you have a Twitter account? Here, pass me your cell phone. I'll respond to her. Episode 248 Emma is Mrs. Taylor. Do you have a Twitter account? Here, pass me your cell phone. I'll help you respond to her. 
Um, Rachel strutted. She grimaced. As a joke, she shook her head and replied, No, I don't have one. How could you not even have a Twitter account? Hugh berated her with frustration. He picked up his cell phone and started to dial Joshua's number. I'll call him and ask him what this is all about. He has to respond to this immediately. However, before he could even make the call, he froze as Joshua had just now posted a response on Twitter. At once, the news that Joshua had responded to Emma's post created a storm on Twitter. Because the man had given such a reply, Joshua, stop it. Emma, it seems I've become your mistress, at Joshua. Stop it! Although it was a simple message, it fired everyone's imagination. It sounded exactly like what a man would say affectionately to his girlfriend when she threw a tantrum. Stop it. Suddenly, there was an eerie silence on Twitter. Within two minutes of the publication, no one posted a single comment. Until someone finally ventured a timid question. Joshua, has your Twitter account been hacked? Then, as though this was a triggering spark that could start a wildfire, Twitter went wild again. My God, Joshua, what is wrong with you? Is that reply meant to scold Emma? Why does it sound like there's a sort of affection in the reply? Ah, I must be imagining things. Scumbag Joshua, are you admitting that you're having an affair with Emma? Have you thought about how your wife would feel? Ah, what they're doing is wrong, but they still get to be openly lubby-dubby. It's a complete insult for the singles like me. Oh God, you've taken the words right out of my mouth. Why do I feel so envious of their interaction? I wonder if Joshua does not intend to clarify anything in today's press conference, but rather announce that he and Emma are in fact in love with each other. All the posts seem to be coming in at once, to the extent that Joshua, who was about to call Rachel, couldn't because his cell phone froze. When Hugh saw his brother's response, he was so mad that he almost smashed his cell phone. This Joshua, he's too much. How can he do this? I'm speechless. Then, picking up his cell phone to call his brother, he realized, why can't I get through? Rachel explained, probably there are too many incoming messages and made the phone shut down. Hugh. He looked at Rachel with a puzzled expression. Why are you so calm? She looked back at him and asked, What should I do then? Give this cheating couple a piece of your mind. Rumors and nonsense. Hugh. Before Hugh could say anything else, they had arrived at the venue of the press conference. He was fuming with anger. You don't appreciate goodwill. They got out of the car and quietly walked into the venue. As they were early, the press wasn't there yet. Hence, Rachel and Hugh went backstage to take a short break. While using the washroom, Rachel was fortunate enough to run into who else but Hannah. When the woman saw Rachel, she raised an eyebrow and sneered. Emma, you actually dare show up here? Rachel twitched her mouth and replied, Why wouldn't I dare to? Even if Joshua replied to you on Twitter, it doesn't change the fact that you're a mistress. You think that you'll get sympathy by coming here and acting pitiful? Let me tell you, you're done for. A male celebrity cheating and having an affair is something that people will forget in a few years. 
but it's different for a woman. It's swarming with reporters here today, and you dare make an appearance? I think you must be crazy. What you really need to do now is to plead on Twitter and ask everyone for their forgiveness. Perhaps then, you might get a little sympathy. You've been seriously stupid to openly provoke Mrs. Taylor so much. Rachel waited patiently for Hannah to finish mocking and ridiculing her before she twitched her mouth and asked, Are you done? The woman narrowed her eyes at once. Spreading her hands, she said, Can I leave now, then? If it weren't for Hannah being in the way, she would have left rather than stand here listening to the woman spouting nonsense. Upon hearing Rachel's words, she was annoyed and rather exasperated. This wasn't the reaction she was hoping to see from Rachel. She wanted to see a pleading and panicky Rachel who was at a complete loss. She wanted to see the girl regulated to the bottom of the pit and thoroughly ashamed. But the person standing before her now was as arrogant as ever, just like when she had been in the news agency. A mere newcomer who talked as though she was above her. Yet, on this matter, Hannah was in fact grossly mistaken. Rachel had an excellent family background, and even though she had fallen into dire straits these years, her innate pride was intact. In fact, compared to how she had been before her family's downfall, she was now much more restrained. The sort of workers that Hannah liked were those who would follow her around and stroke her ego. And because Rachel had not done this, she thought the girl was too arrogant. However, there was nothing more for her to say, hence, she had to get out of the way to let Rachel pass. Without another look at the woman, the latter walked out. As Hannah looked at her figure disappear, she gritted her teeth with anger. She only managed to calm down after taking a few deep breaths. What was the hurry? In any case, she would be just as embarrassed when the press conference started later on. There was no way that Joshua would admit his affair with Emma in the presence of all these media representatives. At the thought of this, she heaved a sigh of relief and walked away. After leaving the washroom, Rachel went to the lounge where Hugh was waiting. He was browsing through Twitter and lamenting at the same time. These people are morons. Then he looked up at Rachel and frowned. Why aren't you worried at all? Would worrying help with anything? She replied as she sat down calmly, apparently unruffled. That, Hugh thought, is very logical. Worrying wouldn't help with anything, but still. He glanced at her a few times and then said with some hesitation, Is there something you're not telling me? I just feel that something's not quite right. She simply pursed her lips and smiled. As she was about to say something, one of the workers ran in to inform. Miss Rachel, Mr. Joshua is here. Santiago asked you to join us at the press conference. Rachel nodded and stood up to follow the worker. However, after she took two big steps, Hugh held her back by tugging at her sleeve. Hey, you're definitely not so silly as to help your husband clarify the matter. She didn't have a chance to speak. Hugh frowned and said immediately, I'll go with you. They both followed the worker as he led them out. As they entered the conference room, they saw that Santiago was already on the stage to start the event with a welcome speech. First of all, we thank everyone for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. Hugh quietly asked Rachel, Say, do you think that Emma will be here? I wonder what she looks like for Joshua to be so infatuated. I'm sure she's a real slut. 
Rachel replied, She's already here. Looking around with surprise, he asked, Where? At this point, a reporter spotted them and approached her, inquiring, Emma, may I ask if you're really Joshua's mistress? Hugh was already on the alert when the reporter charged at them. Hence, he placed himself between Rachel and the reporter. And when the reporter asked the question, he reacted by saying at once, Regarding this matter, you should be asking Joshua. It has nothing to do with her. The moment these words left his mouth, he froze. He had a look of disbelief on his face as he turned to look at Rachel, horrified. His eyes widened. What had the reporter just called her? Emma? Was Rachel Emma? Good grief! He was shocked. Looking at her with great astonishment, he was at a loss for words. Her mouth parted in a grin, and she turned to the reporter. She and Hugh had taken a hidden path to the venue, which should have been a direct route. However, they had still been ambushed, which pointed to the possibility that this reporter had been lying low and waiting in advance. This surely must have been Hannah's plot again. This woman was simply everywhere. Rachel hung her head for a moment before continuing. Where this matter is concerned, I'm afraid my friend here is right. Joshua will give everyone here an explanation. At this point, the reporters began to raise difficult questions. Miss Emma, we notice you address Joshua by name. Is that a sign that you are very familiar with each other? Miss Emma, are you really Joshua's mistress or lover? Do you know Mrs. Taylor? Does Mrs. Taylor know about your close relationship with Joshua? Emma, you... The interrogation came fast and furious. Rachel looked at the crowd before her and turned towards Hannah. After a brief pause, she smiled and said to the crowd, You've all turned up so enthusiastically because you wish to have an answer. Since Joshua has decided to call a press conference, why are you surrounding me like this? Won't Joshua give everyone an answer in a short while? As soon as she said this, everyone saw the light. That's right. They had been invited by Joshua. So why were they surrounding Emma? At this point, someone shouted, Superstar Joshua is here! Following this, the reporters surrounding Rachel all scattered and rushed to the entrance. And for the time being, Rachel was left alone. She raised an eyebrow. Joshua had to be in the underground car park now. How is it possible that he would enter through the main door? Of course, he would use a special passageway. So the shout just then? She turned around, and her gaze swept across the room. She spotted Santiago standing in a far corner, giving her a look. She smiled immediately and nodded to Santiago to thank him. Then, following Hugh, they walked towards the conference room. During this time, Hugh had been quite speechless and stared horrified at Rachel for the longest time before he managed to join the dots. I'll be damned! So you are Emma. It finally made sense. No wonder that she had been so unruffled right from the start. And no wonder a cold person like Joshua would actually speak up for Emma. And no wonder that he had called a press conference. All of this was because Mrs. Taylor was Emma. Now that he knew this, Hugh felt that coming to the event had really been a bad decision. Damn it. Had he come all the way just to watch them display their affections for each other in public? He cursed and swore in silence as he took his seat among the audience. Rachel, on the other hand, walked to the back of the room, and there she saw that Joshua had just come in through the special passageway. When the reporters who had flocked to the main entrance realized that they had been fooled, they came back to reality 
and went back to their seats obediently. Now that the press conference had officially started, Joshua walked to the center of the stage and stood there. The reporters on the seats were in an excited frenzy. The questions they had asked Rachel earlier were now all directed at Joshua. Mr. Taylor, can you tell us what your relationship with Emma is? Why did you respond to her on Twitter? What did you mean by stop it? Mr. Taylor, does your wife know about this? You've kept the identity of Mrs. Taylor under wraps all this time. Did you want this to be a secret marriage? Or could it be that you are not even married? Mr. Taylor! Joshua was the picture of calmness, even as these questions were rapidly directed at him. Santiago extended his hands in a gesture to get the people to calm down. Okay, we will take the questions one by one. The reporters immediately raised their hands. Santiago pointed to one of them. The reporter asked, Mr. Taylor, are you really married? Joshua replied, yes. The reporter was going to follow up with another question when Santiago had pointed to another reporter who asked, Mr. Taylor, what is your relationship with Emma? Everyone turned around simultaneously with this question and looked at Joshua as well as Rachel, who even after hiding had been spotted by the crowd. Joshua's lips curled into a smile and said, Our relationship is what you think it is. That simple declaration shook the crowd. Their relationship was what people thought it was. Their thoughts were that Rachel was Joshua's lover that they had something going on. Hannah was getting angry now and asked boldly, Mr. Taylor, what do you mean by this? Are you telling us that you are with both women? Are you telling us that both Emma and Mrs. Taylor are willing? She certainly did not mince her words. And there was worse to come. The other day, we saw that, Mr. Taylor, you picked Emma up and drove her to your villa district. Does this mean that Emma and Mrs. Taylor lived together? She laughed derisively and looked in Rachel's direction. Emma, since you're here, why are you not daring enough to show your face? Have you finally realized how shameful this is? After she had spoken, all the reporters started to concur with her. That's right, what kind of sort of society is this? What is this all about? Mr. Taylor, is your marriage with Mrs. Taylor on the rocks? When he heard this, Joshua suddenly laughed. He said, that's correct. My wife, Emma and I, we all live together. With that remark, the room fell into a dead silence. Was this how open people were nowadays? However, as everyone was trying to get over their shock, Joshua continued, because my wife is Emma. After saying this, he turned suddenly to look at Rachel, who was in a corner, and held his hand out towards her. Rachel felt a surge of emotions as she smiled and shook her head, and then she walked towards him. She extended her hand and placed it on Joshua's. Both of them stood hand in hand before the media representatives and through the camera lenses, recording a live broadcast, the rest of the world. Joshua's gaze fell steadily on the cameras before him and through the lenses, it was as though he was looking into the eyes of everyone who was watching. He said in a serious tone, Please allow me to introduce my wife, Emma. My wife, Emma. Those simple words were the year's most torturous for the singles out there. Regardless of whether they were reporters or the live streaming audience, everyone thought the same way as they watched the couples standing together, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand. Episode 249. 
I'm her fan. Mrs. Taylor was Emma. This was a fact that almost no one had thought of. Primarily, it was because Emma had kept an extremely low profile. And Mrs. Taylor, she was an enigma that everyone had been trying to figure out for a long time. In addition, everyone had the fixed idea that if Mrs. Taylor had also been someone in the entertainment circle, then it would have been someone really famous or someone who Joshua had paid special attention to. Hence, Mrs. Taylor was probably someone not in the entertainment circle, but someone from a wealthy family. This was the sort of thinking that had been underlying the quest for the identity of Mrs. Taylor. And over time, as the exercise got tougher, this thinking became more entrenched. This was the reason why, when the matter around Emma blew up, the first thought in everyone's mind was that Emma was his mistress. Almost no one had thought of this outcome. As Hugh sat among the crowd, watching the reporters shocked into a stupor, he suddenly felt that his own reaction hadn't been that bad after all. Their eyeballs were almost falling out of their sockets. He twitched his mouth and observed the people around him calmly. The first person who got round to responding was Rachel's sworn enemy, Hannah. She stared at the couple on the stage in disbelief and shock. Her voice was almost trembling as she looked at their hands tightly clasped together and asked, How, how is this possible? How was that possible? Their news agency had asked Rachel to uncover Mrs. Taylor's identity and it had taken months. If Rachel was Mrs. Taylor, she could only feel like this was all a dream. That's right. This was not only just a dream. It was a nightmare. Hannah gulped and looked at the stage again. They were still there, and they were looking at everyone. And finally, their gaze fell on Hannah. His expression turned harsh as he said, Furthermore, we will be suing Gossip Daily News for spreading fake news. They have infringed our privacy and image rights. Your news agency will receive our lawyer's letter very shortly. His sharp words caused Hannah to stagger backwards, and she almost fell on the ground as her legs turned to jelly. If Joshua had issued a lawyer's letter, she thought about his status in the entertainment industry the news agency could very well end up firing her to save itself. She gulped nervously as her expression froze. As for the other reporters, one at a time, they got over their shock. Someone asked, Mr. Taylor, how did you and your wife meet? Joshua's expression darkened at this question, and he turned to look at Rachel. After a pause, he said, we met on the internet. On the internet? An online romance? All the reporters got excited again. Is Emma your fan? Joshua lowered his gaze and replied, I'm her fan. Someone laughed and followed with the question, So who made the first move? Joshua laughed when he heard this question. Who made the first move? As he paused, Rachel suddenly stepped forward and said cheekily, Of course, he made the first move. He laughed again at her remark and said, Are you sure? Rachel immediately shot him a sidelong glance and he hurriedly nodded, saying, I'm sure. I was the one who made the first move. The interaction between the couple was heartwarming and humorous. However, in Tampa, Lucas, who was watching the live stream, crushed his drinking glass with his fingers in anger. The more loving they were, the more of an eyesore it became to him. Lucas squinted his eyes and stared at the live streaming screen. The camera focused on Rachel, 
and her countenance appeared on the screen clearly. Compared to eight years ago, her face had become even more beautiful as she grew up. At this moment, her smile was poised and dignified. However, it also carried along a reserved femininity. She smiled at the reporters every time they asked her a question. Yet, Lucas could tell that she was nervous. Her hands were at her sides, and she was clutching onto the lower hem of her jacket. This was something she always did when she was nervous. All of a sudden, Lucas recalled the past. They were around 15 years old then. They were requested to perform an act when they were in high school. As everyone else came from rich families, they tend to be talented and gifted. Rachel was the only one who didn't have any skills, as she had been spoiled since young. Their small group gathered to discuss what they should perform. And the spoiled girl declared loudly, I don't care, but I want to be in the limelight. Hence, the boys modestly gave in to her and let her be in the limelight. Rachel was very talented in dancing. She was actually very smart and could pick up new skills easily. It didn't take long for them to prepare the performances. However, during the last rehearsal, Rachel, who had been all along fearless, felt slightly nervous. Lucas asked her, Why are you feeling nervous? Rachel replied, There are so many people seated down there that will watch me. How can I not feel nervous? Lucas smiled and comforted her. Just picture the audience as cabbages and smile when you're dancing. When you feel nervous, smiling can not only make you feel calmer and more composed, but can also show your graciousness. It suddenly dawned on Rachel. From then onwards, Rachel never forgot to smile when she faced the media. However, after a while, Lucas realized she did this when she was nervous. At this thought, Lucas could not help but curve his lips upwards. After so many years of not seeing each other, Rachel had not changed at all. It was her old self. As he was thinking of this, he saw from the live streaming screen that Joshua seemed to have realized that Rachel was nervous. Thus, he suddenly reached out his hand and held Rachel's shoulder. This display of affection triggered a buzz in the reporters. One after another, they raised their cameras and started taking pictures rapidly. But his Rachel slowly calmed down under Joshua's protective gesture. Her smile became more genuine and relaxed. Lucas's irises shrunk as she clenched his fist. He stared at Joshua's hand on Rachel's shoulder, eyes shining with bloodthirst, after which a crack was heard. The glass cup he was holding in his hand had shattered loudly into pieces. He did not complain or respond, even though the glass shards had pierced into his skin. Second brother! At that moment, Ava had entered the room carrying tea. Upon noticing his state, she was shocked and rushed to his side. She kneeled down beside him, and her heart ached when she looked at his bleeding hand. She immediately opened his hands with utmost care and realized that many of the glass shards had already pierced into his skin. Ava bit her lips and her eyes reddened. However, her eyes irises shrunk suddenly when she saw Rachel on the screen. Rachel. It was her again. It wasn't surprising, though. It seemed that in this world, Rachel was the only person who could cause her second brother to lose control of his emotions. Ava clenched her teeth tightly with anger. It had been so many years. She was the one who had stayed by her second brother's side. She was the one who had never stopped thinking about him. Yet, why was she still not worth any space in her second brother's heart? Rachel, who was far away in Washington, could obviously not know Lucas and Ava's expression. After the news conference, she returned home together with Joshua. The couple sat at the back seat, and Hugh sat in the passenger seat with a reluctant expression. Hmm, it's just an announcement of your marriage. Why do you have to make it so secretive? 
Joshua completely ignored him. Instead, Rachel laughed. Are you so jealous that you're starting to hate us? You can also announce your relationship. The rich second generation heir with the most potential in Washington has secretly married Juliana. After hearing her words, Hugh immediately shut his mouth. Okay then, he could never beat her in an argument. But instead, Rachel suddenly spoke. Where's Juliana? Hugh, why didn't you accompany Juliana and her parents for a walk around Washington? Hugh twitched his mouth and replied, What's there to enjoy in Washington? Furthermore, I had drunk too much last night, so Juliana said that I should rest today. Rachel answered with an, Oh. But Hugh spoke again. How do you think the online comments will be after your marriage announcement? Rachel, are you not afraid of Joshua's fans scolding you? Rachel corrected him. You should address your brother as Brother Joshua and address me as sister-in-law. Tisk, how can you be considered my sister-in-law? Hugh rolled his eyes and looked back to the front. However, Rachel's interest was instigated by Hugh's question. She hurriedly picked up her phone, opened Twitter, and logged in to see the comments. The hashtag Mrs. Taylor Disclosed had immediately become the number one trending topic. After she clicked on the topic, she saw the picture of Joshua and her standing shoulder to shoulder. The comments below were really aggressive. Most fans weren't able to accept the fact that their idol had a wife and that his wife was an esports caster with not much fame. Thus, many people started attacking Rachel. Ugh, Mrs. Taylor looks so pretty. She must have had plastic surgery. No matter how pretty the woman is, she is still not compatible with my husband. Mrs. Taylor, get lost. He is mine. Mrs. Taylor, come and fight me. Such comments were endless. Rachel was furious. I'm real and untainted. How could I have had plastic surgery? She directly threw her phone into Joshua's arms and said, Your fans are not cute at all. Joshua raised his eyebrows, lowered his head, and took a glance at the phone. Then he put the phone to the side. He was gloating at her misfortune and said, Who asked you to be so incredibly conceited? See, you're getting scolded now. <laughs> Rachel was actually faking her anger. She knew that the fans' actions were not the idol's fault. Furthermore, he was already hers. She was able to understand the jealousy the fans had towards her. She wouldn't be bothered by them. As she thought so, Rachel picked up her phone once again and started scrolling through Twitter, viewing the trending topics. It was a habit of hers that had formed after she became a reporter. If she had nothing to do, she would post something on Twitter. As she was looking at some other content, she heard Hugh's voice. Dang, this is really an outright public display of affection. It's really shameless. Rachel lifted her head up in confusion. What's wrong? Hugh let her know. Check Twitter. Check Joshua's Twitter. Since the matter had just been announced, Rachel had turned off the comments on her Twitter. She had even changed her private messages to do not disturb mode. But after she heard Hugh's words, she immediately picked up her phone and opened Twitter. She then saw the status Joshua had just posted. Joshua, patting your head, wife, at Emma. Episode 250, A War Over Comments. Touching the head was an expression of one's feelings. Rachel scowled. As soon as he published it, it was immediately shared and circulated in a frenzy. Comments of this sort were made. Joshua, is this in response to the plastic surgery remark? Joshua even replied, Joshua, don't worry everyone. Authenticity is guaranteed. 
I've checked thoroughly. Checked thoroughly? That was a terribly suggestive phrase. What did he mean by checking thoroughly? Of course, there was immediate chaos. Ah, my idol sounds so cozy. What do I do? Hubby, are you abandoning me just like that? I wish to be checked thoroughly by you too. Hun, you've been corrupted, but in such an adorable way. My star, what did you use to check thoroughly? All sorts of comments were posted, which made her blush and increased her heartbeat. This man, Rachel turned red as an apple and couldn't help but feel like she'd been a victim of his teasing. She bit her lip and looked up at him furiously. Her reddened face and flashing eyes with emotions made her exceptionally beautiful to look at. Joshua's eyes darkened. Raising a hand and pointing at him, she said to mock him angrily, You just wait. Then, she picked up her cell phone and started to type on the keyboard. She put the keyboard on loud so the clicking was rhythmic. After she was done, she looked up provocatively with a raised chin as if to challenge the man. Joshua raised an eyebrow and picked up his cell phone. Indeed, she had posted something and had even tagged him in it. Emma, but I haven't checked you thoroughly. What if you're the one who has had plastic surgery? At Joshua. Joshua's lips curved into a smile when he read the comment. The normally cold and distant man had no idea the damage that his dazzling smile could cause. Rachel was rapt. She saw him type something on his cell phone again. Shortly, there was an expected vibration on Rachel's cell phone. She looked down at the device and unlocked the screen. Immediately, Joshua's post was displayed. Joshua, I welcome a thorough check anytime. Emma, but I haven't checked you thoroughly. What if you're the one who has had plastic surgery? At Joshua. Fine, thought Rachel. I admit defeat. This guy was too shameless. Of course, these posts were followed by an explosion of comments. Please live stream the thorough checks. Ah, baby, I wish to do a thorough check on you too. How could it be that my idol had plastic surgery? What a joke. Idol, where did your aloof and cold personality go? Why do I feel so warm? Woohoo! I've been suddenly and unexpectedly taunted for my singlehood again. My idol, compensate me. Rachel clutched her own face with her hands, completely embarrassed. And at this point, Hugh added, do you guys wish to do a thorough check now? You can pretend I'm not here. Really. Rachel scowled. Joshua. What? Rachel immediately tossed her cell phone aside and gave Joshua a vicious glare. He lowered his head and continued to look at his cell phone. As though he had just thought of something, he started typing again. Seeing his serious expression, Rachel did not dare to interrupt and went back to playing on her own phone. Shortly afterwards, she saw that he had tagged her in another post. Was this guy about to tease her again? Damn, she had decided to surrender. Hence, she logged into Twitter again. However, what she read next made her tear up. Joshua Every life has its imperfections. To me, you are the greatest perfection in my lifetime. Thank you for coming back to me eventually. At Emma. It was a simple message that held so much meaning. It reminded Rachel of what happened eight years ago, of that meeting that never took place, for a reason that she still had no clarity over. She hung her head, and for unknown reasons, couldn't agree more with the post. 
the heavens were just. Her family had been treated unfairly in life, yet she had been able to find perfection in love. She bit her lip and did not respond to this post. However, the post did cause another explosion of comments. Initially, the masses hadn't approved their relationship and had even attacked Rachel out of jealousy. But now, they were moved by Joshua's post. Wow, I'm so touched. What do I do? I want this sort of perfection too. Let's stop being nasty to Mrs. Taylor. Actually, they look like a good match standing next to each other. I wish you both well. Romances in the entertainment circle often hit their expiry dates quickly. However, I feel that Joshua and Emma will be a legendary couple. I sincerely wish you both the best. Wishing both of you a lifetime together. All sorts of wishes and blessings were posted, and reading them made Rachel smile with delight. Putting her cell phone aside, she sneaked at the chauffeur and Hugh in the front seats. Then, she quietly reached out to hook her little finger around Joshua's thumb. Although she looked calm on the surface, the contact with his large and warm hands still made her heart pound uncontrollably. Her heart was filled with sweetness. Was that actually his way of confessing his love to her? At this point, Hugh suddenly turned around to look at them. I'll be damned, Joshua. Can you be any more nauseating? Perfection indeed. What is so perfect about your life? He frowned and snorted. Turning around again, he gave them a look of resentment, as though he had been reminded of how Anne had walked out of the Taylor family with Joshua eight years ago, leaving him behind. Rachel and Joshua exchanged a glance and quickly put a stop to this topic. Very soon they arrived home. It was 5 p.m. However, Juliana and her parents weren't home yet. Anne was in the living room, doing her exercises, and smiled immediately when she saw them. Hugh's eyes swept across the apartment and frowned when he saw no sign of Juliana. Why aren't they back yet? Aren't the two old folks tired of walking around? Rachel and Anne looked at each other and raised an eyebrow when they heard his remark. Hugh was obviously concerned about Juliana, but he hid it behind harsh words. What an awkward child. He looked at his cell phone impatiently and dialed Juliana's number. It rang for some time before the line was picked up. He asked, Where are you guys? Upon hearing a reply, he jumped up at once. What? I'll come over right now. He hung up and strode towards the main door. Anne hurriedly stopped him. What's the matter? He said, My dad and Auntie Suzanne called Juliana, the silly girl. She is actually taking father-in-law and mother-in-law with her to meet them over dinner. Isn't this like walking straight into the tiger's lair? Rachel was astonished to hear this. What sort of description was that? So it seemed that Hugh was not such a moron after all. He was aware that his own home was a dangerous place. Rachel couldn't help but shake her head and laugh. Hugh dashed out of the house and drove away in a hurry. Juliana, together with her dad and mom, was window shopping around Washington when her cell phone rang. She glanced at the screen and saw it was an unfamiliar number. Juliana paused. Puzzled, she picked up the call and realized afterwards that it was Hugh's stepmother, Suzanne. For unknown reasons, she suddenly got nervous and said immediately, Aunt Suzanne, how can I help you? There was a short pause and then the woman laughed. She went on to say, It's like this. Hugh's father knows that the in-laws are in Washington and has specifically asked me to call you and arrange dinner together. Do you have time tonight? Hugh's father. Juliana looked at her parents immediately. Juliana's dad could hear the conversation on the phone, 
so he hurriedly nodded. Juliana bit her lip and hesitated. But... Her dad took over the phone in a flash and said, Sure, in-law. We'll see you tonight. Nodding and smiling, Suzanne replied, Sure, come to our place for a visit. After hanging up, Juliana's dad advised his daughter, One look at Hugh and you can see has a good background. Such a decent family. We ought to visit them. I'd like to meet his father too. It was too late for Juliana to say anything. Her father had agreed, so she couldn't possibly back out now. Hence, they hailed a cab and headed for the Taylor family home. On the way, Juliana was going to call Hugh to inform him, but she received his call at that moment. She updated him of the situation. She wasn't quite sure if it was because Hugh had immediately offered to come over, or if there were other reasons, but she felt a little unsettled, as though something bad was going to happen. Taking in a deep breath, she tried to suppress the discomfort she was feeling. Because Joshua had not wanted to have anything more to do with the Taylor family, after they left, he had bought a villa that was a great distance away. Hence, because Juliana had been in the city, she was very much closer to the Taylor family home than Hugh. By the time the cab arrived at the Taylor family home, Hugh was only then leaving and the drive would take an hour. Standing at the main entrance, Juliana looked at the metal gate, which was like the doorway to the Palladio Villa, and felt lost. The last time she had come with Hugh, he had been driving and the gate had opened automatically when it recognized his car. However, this time... Juliana's dad and mom stared at the grand entrance, now feeling an immeasurable pressure on themselves. Her mother even stammered. Juliana... Hugh, Hugh lives in this place? How many people live here? All they could see was the outer courtyard, and it was like a park. Juliana's mom even thought that this was a whole villa neighborhood, in a similar style to Joshua's home. Juliana glanced at her mother and hung her head. She said softly, This is his home. Her dad was stumped as was her mom. She ventured, this, this is a tad big, isn't it? Hugh's family is this wealthy? Juliana nodded. Juliana's dad glanced at her and cleared his throat. Then he said, <clears throat> okay, let's not fuss over this. Otherwise, we'll embarrass our daughter. Her mom immediately nodded and agreed. Yes, yes. Her dad then looked at Juliana and told her, Go knock on the door then. She stepped forward and knocked on the door. After a while, they finally heard an impatient voice coming from within. Who's that? Episode 251 Juliana's parents visit the Taylors. Feeling terribly nervous, suddenly, Juliana squeaked. It's me. Immediately, the side gate next to the huge metal gate swung open. Behind it stood a security officer, who when he saw Juliana, frowned and asked, Who are you? Surprised by the question, she hung her head for a moment and began, I... Juliana's dad stepped forward and said, We are Hughes. Before he could finish, the security officer frowned again and asked, Do you have an appointment? Juliana's dad paused at this question. What? The security officer waved his hand impatiently. Go away! How can I let you in without an appointment? Do you think this is a tourist attraction? Our sir and madame are extremely busy people, and have no time to see shabby people like you. Juliana's dad was immediately belligerent to hear the word shabby being used on them. Juliana, too, looked up in horror. The last time she had visited, 
Besides being awed by the luxury of the Taylor family home, she had left with the impression that the employees of the household were all very well-mannered. But this person? Ugh. She bit her lip. The emotions she was experiencing were a little hard to take, and it made her feel quite sick. Juliana was outwardly gentle, but she was a tough person inside. She might have probably not said a word if she had been the one who got insulted, but this person had insulted her parents as well. Feeling a little angry now, she grabbed her father's hand and looked at the security officer. Did Auntie Suzanne not tell you that I'm coming here today? She asserted herself in anger. The security officer fell silent for a moment and then asked, Who are you? Even the servants in the Taylor household are more decently dressed than you. Would the Taylors have such poor relatives? Even the servants were more decently dressed. This, Juliana did not doubt. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening. That's it for today, guys.